Hello, everyone. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome to Getting Started with Web3 DAP Development. I'm going to share my screen for tonight's feature presentation. All right. Let me know in the chat if everyone can hear me well and if you can see my screen. I'm sharing the slides now for our presentation. I will also drop a link to the slides in the chat for those of you that want to take a look and follow along. Welcome everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. My name is Alexandra and I will be your presenter tonight. So let's talk about what our agenda is for the night. First up, we're going to discuss who is on the call. We're going to get to know each other and find out who you are and what your goals are in terms of Web3 DAP development. Then we're going to get into four key topics that will introduce our Web3 DAP development course. So tonight we're introducing some topics that we dive into in the actual course. And in the course, we actually get into building DAPs, but tonight we're doing an overview of the whole DAP landscape itself. So we'll talk about what is web development, what is a DAP, what is Web3, and how would you go about building a DAP. Then we'll do a dive into the course curriculum, and we're happy to answer any questions throughout the night or at the end as well. We'll stick around. So let's start off by talking about who is on the call. We want to get to know you and find out what your goals are in terms of the blockchain programming, DAP development, landscape. So feel free to type out in the chat, if you are so willing, what is your occupation? Do you know how to code? And how much experience do you have in web development and blockchain? That way, we can tailor our presentation to your needs. Also, we want to know who is interested in our course so we can tailor the course to meet the students in the course. So feel free to let us know. And don't worry, if you don't have any experience, that's completely fine. We do tailor our webinars and our courses for absolute beginners by default. So feel free to let us know, even if you have no experience. I will get started. I will tell you a bit about myself. My name is Alexandra Kropova, and I am an instructor here at LumiWealth. I invested in Ethereum back in 2017, and since then, I've taught thousands of students just like you how to build smart contracts and dApps. All right, looks like we have a few messages coming through in the chat. We have D'Angelo, I have zero experience in coding, and I'm new to Web3. All right, so I quite expected most of our students are beginners, so we will make sure to cover everything from scratch if we do have all beginners tonight. We also have Lena HTML5 experience and no experience blockchain. Okay, so if you do have some HTML experience, that will give you a head start, of course, with the building of the app part of a DAP. All right, feel free to keep the messages coming and we will read them throughout the night if you have any questions or any comments. We also have Zishan looking to become a blockchain solution consultant slash scaling businesses with emerging and disruptive technology with a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, Python, and basic Java. Much more as well. Great. So if you do have experience in building websites, perhaps programming, that will definitely give you a leg up with regards to Web3 DAP development. You'll already have some foundation. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your messages. Good to get to know who is on our call. Next, we're going to do a quick introduction to Lumi Wealth, and we'll jump into our topics. We also have a message from Anton, no practical experience, but basic understanding. All right, so if you have a basic understanding, that is helpful for sure. And then in our course, we get into the practical experience. We build a lot of projects throughout the 10 weeks of this course. We also have Michael, I'm a Hello World level programmer, very interested in crypto web three and an active investor, looking to see how I can expand a DAO LVE co-founded. All right, oh, I have co-founded, gotcha. Awesome, all right, so sounds like you have some interest in web three and a bit of programming experience, and then you want to expand your decentralized organization. All right, great, sounds like a good place to get started in terms of joining up with our course. 
So you can expand your DAO with perhaps a Web3 DAP side. All right, thank you everyone. Keep the messages coming. And we're going to now do our introduction to Lumi Wealth. Lumi Wealth is our online school. We have courses like crypto trading using algorithms, this course Web3 using React, algorithmic trading, machine learning, options trading, and blockchain programming, which is the partner course to with the Web3 DAP course. We primarily focus on building courses for the financial industry, such as algorithmic trading. And now we're getting into the cryptocurrency blockchain space, which is heavily involved with the financial industry. So feel free to check out all of the courses that we have and our student reviews at lumiwealth.com. As well, we have a YouTube channel where we post webinars like these and free tutorials. So I encourage you to head on over to youtube.com slash LumiWealth. And here you can view some of our previous webinars and some of our sample tutorials for free. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell. We also have a question from Lairu. What is the difference in both? I believe you're referring to our two courses. So with our Web3 course, which is the focus of tonight, we're talking about how to build a website that interacts with the blockchain. So we're more focusing on the website part and the communication with the blockchain. In our blockchain programming course, we're focused on the blockchain itself. So we learn how to build smart contracts that live on the blockchain. So the two separate sides, there is the website or the app side, and which can connect to the blockchain. Then there's the blockchain side itself. So that's the difference between our two courses that we have. And we can go more in depth about the two at the end as well, if you are still curious. So as I was saying, please subscribe on YouTube. And we also have a Discord channel free for everyone to join. Even if you're not in a course, you're welcome to join our Discord. We have tons of communication happening on Discord. You can ask questions. You can see bits of information and articles people are sharing and tutorials people are sharing resources so feel free to join our discord community with all of our students and instructors we'll also have a survey at the end of the webinar so we would love to know your feedback and what you would like out of our webinars and out of our courses because we do take our student feedback and use it to determine our courses if you do have any questions throughout the night feel free to ask you can also ask questions at the end. All right, so that is an introduction to LumiWealth, our online school and our courses. Now we're going to jump into our first topic of the night for our webinar, Web3 DAP development. So before we get into Web3 and DAP development, we have to know how to actually build a regular app because a DAP is just a regular app that can communicate with and use the blockchain. So before we can understand a DAP, we have to talk about a regular app. This is where we have the DAP, which stands for decentralized app. And we're just talking about the app part for now. An app is also commonly called a web app or a website, or it could be a mobile app as well. And we're going to dive into what is a regular app? How would you build a regular app? And then we'll talk about how you can take that app that you built and connect it to the blockchain. We also have a question before we start. Shal says, please, which programming language is best suited for blockchain programming, C++, Python, or Java? And then Zishan said, probably Solidity. So if you want to do blockchain programming, building smart contracts that live on the blockchain, then yes, that would be Solidity for the Ethereum blockchain. If you're talking about building a dApp, then the most popular language is JavaScript, which we will jump into. Feel free to ask more about that at the end as well. So let's jump into what is regular web development? How do websites work? Websites have two main sides to them. There is the client side, and then there is the server side. The client side is also commonly called the front end side. And this refers to the portion of the website that is seen by your clients, by your visitors. So this would be the visuals, 
what users can click on, if they can fill out a form. That is the client side. As well, there's the server side, also commonly called the back end, the behind the scenes part of a website. So the server might have your database, which stores all of your data. For example, if you have an online store, it could store all the data about your products, the data about your customers. That's all hidden because it's in the server side or the back end side of your website. So in there, you could have your database side, you could have your server, which is running processes like the server can take in user input. If someone wants to sign up for your website, the server will handle that sign up and take in that new user. So we have these two parts to a website, the client and the server. And these two sides, they talk to each other with client-server communication. Now, where does the blockchain come into all this? The blockchain side will typically go in the backend side of the website. So you can have some communication on the client side with the blockchain. Most of the blockchain itself, however, is going to be behind the scenes in the backend side of your website if you are making a DAP. With a regular website, we don't need to interact with the blockchain. You can just have client server communication. That's it to make the whole website run. And then if you want to turn your website into a DAP, you add in communication with the blockchain, which we'll get into more later tonight. So every website has this client server communication that is running the site. But how would you actually go about building this kind of communication? Well, let's talk about the four primary tools that you would use to build a website. First, we have HTML, which one of our attendees mentioned they have experience in HTML. HTML is a markup language, which is very similar to a coding language. It's used to build out the page elements of your site. So you would use HTML to outline what do you want on your website. And if you're building a DAP, it's the same thing. First, you have to outline in HTML, what are the elements that you want on your site? Do you want a button? Do you want images? Do you want an input form, a sign-up form? You can lay out all of those elements in HTML. So at the heart of every website, its structure is written in HTML. So this is typically the first language that a web developer will learn is HTML to learn how to actually put elements onto a website. So in our course together, we're going to do a quick introduction in the course about HTML so that we all know how to actually put elements onto a web page, onto a DAP. Next up, you can use CSS to style the web page. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It's, again, similar to HTML, but its purpose is to add styling to a web page. So in our course, we're going to do, again, a quick introduction to CSS so everyone knows how you would style a web page. So typically, a web developer will learn HTML and then CSS so they know how to build a, the elements on a web page, such as buttons, paragraphs, links, and images. And then CSS is used to style the web page. So you could position elements. You could add different colors. We have a message. Zishan says, essentially, HTML is the structure and CSS is the cosmetics. Yes, there you go. That's a great metaphor. So in our course, we're going to cover briefly HTML and CSS so we all know how to build out a basic structure and basic style for a website. Next up, we have to learn how to add website functionality. Because if you just build a website with HTML and CSS, then Yes, you'll have a website, but it won't be able to do anything. It can convey information. You could build a landing page or a portfolio. But if you want to build out functionality on the website, we do this with a programming language called JavaScript. So functionality means being able to interact with the website. If a user wants to come and they want to sign up to your online school, or if a user comes, they want to buy a product, then you have to build out the functionality to actually enable that to happen. If a user wants to go to your DAP and they want to buy an NFT from the DAP, you have to build the functionality so they can actually do that. So they can actually do that transaction. And we do this with JavaScript, which is a coding language or a programming language. JavaScript is the number one most popular programming language for building the website 
functionality, the functionality of websites. So about 99% of websites use JavaScript for their functionality. So typically a web developer will learn HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript so they can build a website and the website can actually have functionality. So you can accept input if someone wants to sign up. You can navigate to different pages with JavaScript. So you, your website can actually be interactive. So in our course, we're going to cover HTML, CSS, and then JavaScript, learning how to build a website that has functionality. After that point, you can start incorporating the blockchain into your website, because at that point, you'll have a website and you can start communicating with the blockchain with JavaScript. So if you're communicating with Java, with blockchain, that is another piece of functionality, something that your website can do. So you code that in a JavaScript. So in our course, we're going to learn how to build a website and then how to connect to the blockchain with JavaScript. That will be our first project. However, on top of that, if you want to build more complex websites, you have to learn how to use additional tools. So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, those are the three fundamental tools that every web developer will learn. But then there are more tools that you learn after that as you build more and more complex applications. So we'll start by building a website and then turn it into a DAP by connecting to the blockchain. And we'll talk more about DAP shortly. Then we're going to dive into another tool called React.js. React is a library, which means it allows us to use pre-built functionality to build our website. And typically you will use React to organize your website into components. So if you have a complex website with hundreds of pages, then you have to organize all those different pages, different sections. And with React, you can organize the different parts of your website into reusable components like a jigsaw puzzle with pieces that you can reuse. So React is very commonly used to build out complex websites. There are similar libraries to React, but React is the most popular one for building out more complex websites with these reusable components. Because otherwise, if you just used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it's going to get hard to manage a complex website with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So that's why we have these helpful additional tools like React.js. And React.js is built on JavaScript. So in order to use it, you code in JavaScript to use it. We also have a question from Darren. Is React.js a good choice over Next.js? All right, so yes, React is much more popular and it's used at companies small and large for organizing your website into these different reusable parts. So if you have, for example, a navigation bar at the top of your website and you want to reuse that on different pages, you can do that with React by turning that navigation bar into a component. Same thing with any piece or portion of the site, you can organize it. So with React, we have a much more organized project. And typically these days, if you want to get hired as a web developer, you have to know React or a similar library. Because typically these days, we don't build a website with just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Websites are too complex now. You have to use something like React to help you organize it. Before we continue, we have a question from uh, Shal. Sorry, but before you go, in details of the languages, what are the differences between Web 1, Web 2, and Web 3? So we will get into the differences shortly between Web 1, Web 2, and Web 3 shortly tonight. But I can do a quick overview before we jump into it. So Web 3 refers to websites that connect to the blockchain. Web 2 refers to the current phase of websites right now, where most websites are not connected to the blockchain. and so. It's talking about different iterations of how websites are built. We'll get more into that later tonight, but great question. So once we learn how to use React, we can then connect our website, which now uses React to organize it to the blockchain. So this will be our second project in terms of DAP projects. We'll build regular websites as well. 
but we'll learn how to build a website with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React, which allows us to now build more complex websites. And we'll learn how to connect that to the blockchain. So now that we've talked about a website in general, let's talk about what it means to connect to the blockchain. So that will be our next slide. When you connect to the blockchain, you've now taken your app and you've transformed it into a DAP, which stands for Decentralized Application. It's called a decentralized application because it connects to decentralized technology. The most popular decentralized technology is the blockchain. And so that is the meaning of a DAP. We're connecting to the blockchain. The point of connecting to the blockchain is to make use of blockchain smart contracts. So on the blockchain, which we'll learn how to connect to, we can connect to smart contracts, which have code that runs autonomously. So blockchain programmers will use Solidity, which we mentioned briefly tonight, to build these smart contracts. And we cover that in our blockchain programming course. With these smart contracts, we can connect to them via our application and we can take advantage of their functionality. We can take advantage of those smart contracts which run autonomously. So the smart contracts are running on their own. You can either build your own smart contracts, for example, a smart contract to represent your store and handle all of your orders automatically over the blockchain, or you can use smart contracts that are already built. So in our course, we're going to use smart contracts that are already built that I have built specifically for the course, because this course is focused on the app side. Then we have our second course that's focused on the blockchain side. So we can connect to these smart contracts in our decentralized app to take advantage of their autonomous functionality. So for example, if I have a website for an online store and I'm handling all my orders over the blockchain instead of just over my own website, well, now all of my customers can check their orders on the blockchain. So if they make an order from my website, they can check that the order went through by checking the blockchain. So that's one of the benefits of connecting to the blockchain on your website is that now you have more transparency to your customers because they can check everything that happened on the blockchain. As well, you can prevent the loss of data this way because if a customer attempts to make an order on your site and they're not sure if it went through or not, well, they can check on the blockchain, did the order go through? This also helps improve your security because the blockchain has inherent security built into it because of the technology and because of the way that transactions are checked before they get put on the blockchain. So we have a lot fewer hacks and loss of data and just in general, better security with our sites if we do connect to the blockchain. Because every time there is a transaction that is added to the blockchain, it gets checked by several nodes or computers on the blockchain. So transactions get checked before they're added and they're also encrypted. Therefore, we improve our security. So although hacks do happen on the blockchain, it's much less common than a regular website. Because a regular website doesn't have this decentralized technology that is doing the checks across different computers before the transactions get accepted. A blockchain will check your transactions before they get accepted to make sure they're not fraudulent, to make sure you have the money that you are trying to use or the crypto you're trying to use. Therefore, your customers have more trust in your site because they know that you have higher security thanks to the connection to the blockchain. Before we continue, Myron is asking for the PowerPoint, so I will share a link again in the chat. All right, so we were talking about the benefits of connecting to smart contracts. So we talked about how if you have a website that can connect to the blockchain, you get advantages like the autonomous smart contracts and then the permanence because everything gets logged about everything that happens, it will get logged on the blockchain so your customers can check. And therefore your website 
your operations are more transparent because everyone can check, did, did you do what you said you did if it appears on the blockchain? As well, you have higher security because transactions will be checked before they get accepted. On your regular website, you might accept transactions, yes, which could, could mean any kind of interaction. You might just accept them without checking them. But with the blockchain, they get checked with a higher level of security before they actually get accepted. So that's why we have this inherent improvement on security if we do use decentralized technology. This also helps reduce double spending or counterfeit money because this is actually a big problem with digital currency. If it's not a crypto, if it's just a regular dollar, you can, it's easier to double spend a regular dollar, which means spend it twice spend the same dollar twice fraudulently than it is to double spend a crypto because a crypto will be tracked by the blockchain. So we also reduce counterfeit spending, double spending, if we do connect to the blockchain. Before we continue with some examples, we have another question from Zishan. Does this course cover governance and or permissioned versus permissionless? This course doesn't specifically cover that. We are happy to take suggestions for what should be added to the curriculum and also happy just to answer any questions at any time throughout the course because we will provide instructor support for all our students. So if you are interested in some specific topics like governance, then we'd be happy to do some extra tutorials on that for you, but it's not specifically in the curriculum. All right, so now let's get into some examples of dApps. So I already mentioned one example, an online store where you take your orders over the blockchain. And we already talked about all the advantages of that. Another example could be an NFT marketplace. So a website where you are allowing users to put up their NFTs and then put them up for buying and selling and trading, as well as NFT minting, where you actually allow users to mint NFTs on the app. Another example could just be a to-do list where you have a regular website where you can track your to-do items, but all those items get tracked on the blockchain as well. So this is a simple example where you have a regular website, and yes, a to-do list could be a regular website where you just add items you have to do, but if you make it into a dApp, then all of the items will get tracked on the blockchain as well. So you can build out this example to see the permanence of the blockchain and to get an example of taking a regular website and connecting it to the blockchain. So all of your to-do list items would now get recorded on the blockchain. Another example is, is passwordless sign-in. So it, on a regular website, you might have a username, a password, sign up with your email. If you forget your password, you have to check your email to change your password. Or there might be two-factor authentication where you have to check your phone and put in a code. So that's with a regular site. If you want to build a dApp, you can actually do passwordless sign-in where you just connect through your cryptocurrency wallet and you just sign in like that with automatic sign-in. So there's no checking email, checking password. You just sign in with your wallet. So that's one example. In this case, you wouldn't even have to connect to smart contracts. You would just have to connect to your cryptocurrency wallet. So you're still connecting to an aspect of the blockchain, which is a wallet, you don't have to talk to a smart contract in this case. So that's a more simple example. Another example is using a smart contract to store data. So if your company has data loss frequently, or if you have some complex process where you frequently lose information in the middle, like if you have a complex shipment that has to be tracked and you, there's a possibility of losing the shipment or losing data about where the shipment is, well, you can track all of that on the blockchain for increased permanence because the blockchain is much more permanent. Once you put something on the blockchain, you can't take it back. So you can much more easily track things like data and a process compared to just a regular site that you're tracking on your own. Another example of a dApp is building an online store, which is kind of what we mentioned already, but with cryptocurrency payments. So you have an online store, but you accept payments in crypto. So we already covered this and some of the benefits of taking a regular company, a regular website, like a store, and connecting it to the blockchain so that it has this, all the benefits of this decentralized technology. 
Another example is a cryptocurrency exchange app. So you can build a website where you allow users to come and trade in different cryptos for one another. Or another example is a trading bot where you can automate trading on your site. Another example is building out a site that represents a bank where users can deposit cryptos or take loans out as well. Another example is yield farming. So this is where you users can put up some of their crypto and then get a reward for you know, lending it out for a certain amount of time. Another example is building a website for arbitrage where this is again automated trading where you look for small changes in the market to make a profit. So all of those are some examples ranging from simple examples like passwordless sign-in to something more complex like yield farming. So you have a range of projects that you can build from simple to complex. These are all examples of dApps. Any kind of website, simple or complex, that connects to decentralized technology. So that is a dApp. Next topic is going to be Web3. Of course, all closely related. So we did have a question about this previously tonight, asking what are the differences between Web 1, Web 2, Web 3? So we will discuss the differences. So in this sense, in this environment, we're talking about the phases of the internet, the phases of websites. So back in the 80s, we had the phase of Web 1.0, where the web was starting out, websites were mostly static read only. There were few web developers and few visitors to the web. So that was the phase of web 1.0. By the year 2000, we got into the phase of web 2.0 where we are currently at, where there's increased interaction on the web. There's a lot more users. There's a lot more data being passed around because there's more social media. Social media is a big reason for a lot more data being passed around on the web. So we're currently in the phase of Web 2.0, but Web 2.0 is not perfect. There are issues with the web as it is currently. For example, we have these big companies that have a monopoly across industries. They also have a lot of control over data, control over even politics. So we have some issues with Web 2.0. Data is not decentralized. Websites are not decentralized. We have these centralized entities, meaning these companies or monopolies that have a lot of control over what they want to do with your data and how they want to run their organization as well. So with Web 3.0, we attempt to address some of the issues of Web 2.0 by entering a new phase, the next phase of the internet. So with Web 3.0, we attempt to address those issues of these monopolies, as well as lack of control over data, lack of transparency, as well as a lot of hacks and vulnerabilities to the users, identity thefts, those are a huge problem as well. So with Web 3.0, we attempt to use additional technology in websites to improve and fix some of these issues. So with Web 3.0, we talk about primarily websites that incorporate blockchain or decentralized technology. So with the decentralized technology like blockchain, we can improve and reduce the monopolies that companies have. So it's much easier for a smaller company to get their foot in the door when the web is decentralized. As well, data is more transparent because as we mentioned tonight, your data can be stored on the blockchain. So it's visible to see what is happening to your data, where is it going, as well as what is happening at the company. We can also build decentralized organizations, as someone mentioned earlier tonight, where you have an organization, but instead of being controlled by an owner, a CEO, or even any kind of leadership, it's decentralized, where any user of the website can vote on regulations of the website or the organization. So with Web 3.0, we also reduce hacks, as we mentioned tonight, because of the security benefits in the blockchain. We already talked a lot about that tonight. So with Web 3.0, we use new technologies like blockchain technology to address some of these issues with Web 2.0. And we're talking about websites that are dApps. So we use Web 3 
there are Web3 libraries, which we'll discuss, and they allow you to take a website and move it toward this phase of Web 3.0. And you do that with Web 3 technology. We already talked about a lot of the benefits of Web 3.0. And the most popular way to connect to the blockchain is with Web 3 JS. So this is another library. Remember, we mentioned earlier React. React was a library. And we use JavaScript to use React. Well, same thing with Web3. It's a library where we use JavaScript to use Web3. So it is built in JavaScript, and it allows us to connect it to the blockchain. So with Web3 JS, it's a library, which means a set of pre-built tools that allow us to take our website and connect it to the blockchain. So in our course, we're going to learn remember, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and also Web3 JS. Web3 JS is what we will use to actually connect to the blockchain to connect to smart contracts, connect to a cryptocurrency wallet. So it's still JavaScript. It's just a library, a different library that we're using. But we're still coding in JavaScript. You just take your website and you add functionality into it. You code some more functionality to connect to the blockchain. So that is Web3.js. It's specifically, specifically a JavaScript library. So this is the most popular library for connecting to the blockchain, which is why we chose it. And there are other libraries like Web3Py for Python. Those are less popular, not as built out, but there are other options than JavaScript. JavaScript is the most popular one, however, because if you are, have built a website with JavaScript, it makes sense to continue to use JavaScript to keep building functionality instead of adding another language. So that is Web3.0. Next up, our final topic of the night is taking a look at how to build a DAP. So we'll look at an example project of how we would build a DAP from start to finish. So you'll see some of the topics covered tonight as we go through this sample project. Now, in our course, we're going to build multiple projects. So this is just one example of the timeline or the steps for how you would build one DAP. So let's discuss. Step one, we would build a new NPM project. NPM refers to Node Package Manager. It allows us to build a new project and use different packages in it, packages like React and Web3, as well as Truffle. Truffle is a DAP management tool. So in our DAP project, we'll use a lot of different tools like Truffle, React, they're all working together. Truffle specifically allows you to manage the whole DAP. You can manage your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript, your React, Web3. If you have smart contracts, you can put them in, into your Truffle project as well. So you can have all the sides of your DAP in one project. If you have tests, you can put them in there as well. So that will be step two. Step three in this sample project is to run a local blockchain with Ganache. A local blockchain is a simulator for the real blockchain. But with a local blockchain, we can instantly fire up a clone that's running on our computer. So this, the point of this is to test out the project for free. Because otherwise, if you published your project immediately to the main Ethereum blockchain, the public network, then you would have to pay for every single transaction. So that's why first you test out all of your functionality at every, at every step, at every phase. You test it out on a local blockchain. Then at the very end, when you're complete, then you send your project off and you connect it to the public main network. We can run a local blockchain with Ganache. It will simulate the real blockchain, but you can test out all your functionality for free instead of having to pay for every transaction. Step four is optional to build out a React app. So I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the night that we use HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So you can just use those three, which is why React is listed as optional. If you want to build something more complex, then you would use React. If you want to just build a simple website, very basic, you can just stick with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
but we'll learn in our course how to do both, how to build a simple one and then how to build more complex ones with React. Step five, you would build the front end of your DAP with HTML. So remember, HTML we use to list out all of the elements that we want on the site. Do we want buttons, text, images? We can list all of that out, put out, list out the structure, build out the web structure with HTML. You can add CSS if you want to style the site. And that is the setup for the site. Next up, you have to use Web3.js to connect to the blockchain. So you can connect to smart contracts that are on the blockchain with Web3.js. For example, going back to our store, if you have an online store, well, you build out the website for your store, yes. Then you have to connect to your store on the blockchain. So this would be connection over a smart contract. If you don't want to connect to a smart contract, you can just connect to a cryptocurrency wallet like MetaMask. So this would be if you just want to do transactions with crypto or just do passwordless sign-in with a wallet, something more simple, then you could just connect to a cryptocurrency wallet like MetaMask. Or if you want to build a more complex app, you connect to a smart contract. In this course, we won't cover how to build smart contracts because that is our blockchain programming course, but we will be using smart contracts that are pre-built. So those are the steps for how to build a DAP from start to finish. So from starting off building the project to building the website and then connecting to the blockchain. Then at that point, you have a website that is connected to the blockchain. And these websites can be different. It all depends on what kind of website you want to build. Typically, if I want to build an online store, I connect to an online store smart contract that I built or that my teammate built for me if I'm working with a team and I am the DAP developer and they are the blockchain contract developer. So you here typically you would connect to a specific smart contract for your website. If I have my to-do list website, I'm connecting to my to-do list smart contract on the blockchain. If I have an NFT website, I'm connecting to my NFT contract. If I have a trading website, I'm connecting to my trading contract. So every DAP can be different depending on what industry you're in, what kind of website you want to build. Do you want to build a simple website that just does chatting and you can sign in with your crypto wallet? Or do you want to build something more complex like a bank where users can take out loans? So you would connect to different contracts for different purposes. And that is the timeline for how you would build a sample DAP. And we'll build many apps, many DAPs together in our Web3 course. And we'll build DAPs for different industries. Speaking of which, next up, we're going to discuss our curriculum. So we'll talk about exactly what you will build in our course. I will drop a link to our course curriculum and where you can purchase the course as well in the chat. We also have a message, do we cover ubiquitous computing or semantic web? And if not in this course, do you offer another? We don't cover those in this course and we don't have them in any other course, but I can make a note of the recommendations, the suggestions from tonight, including ubiquitous computing. And then we had previously governance as well. So now let's jump into the course curriculum. So here I'm at lumiwealth.com and I'm at the Web3 course page. So you can read the course description, read more about the tools that we use in the course. And now let's get into the course curriculum. So we have 10 weeks in this supersized course. Starting off week one, we will do an introduction to JavaScript and web development. So we're going to introduce HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in week one. That way we all know how to build a website. So even if you have no prior experience to coding, then you can still follow along with this course because we dedicate week one to learning the fundamentals. In week two, we already start building a DAP. So in week two, we will use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and we will also connect to the blockchain. So we will build our first DAP. This will be 
a simple DAP because we're just using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're not implementing React just yet. So in week two, we, be we begin our project of building a website that can connect to a blockchain smart contract. In week three, we continue with our DAP project development. So in week one, we get the setup started, the setup of the project, the setup of connection. In week three, we continue the project and we start building out more of the website itself, like the web page HTML and connecting to a cryptocurrency wallet with Web3.js. We'll also notice other tools throughout the way, like Ethers.js. So we will cover more tools in the course, including Ethers. These are all popular tools that are used to build dApps. In week four, we finish up our project. So we're still building our dApp with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In week four, we finish it up by enabling our user to interact with our smart contract. So anyone that goes to the site can now interact with the blockchain contract over our site. So our site is like the gateway to easily access smart contracts because you could directly go to the blockchain, but this is going to limit your audience because most of your audience is going to struggle connecting to the blockchain. They need your website as the gateway. So that will be our project finale. Then we'll jump into part two of our course with week five. So halfway, week five, we will get into web development with React JS. So this is where we start to learn how to manage more complex websites. Websites where we have a lot of pages, a lot of components. This is what you'll typically see at a company because most companies have a complex system running on their site. So you have to learn something to manage that complex structure. And React is the most popular library for managing sites. So we'll jump into in week five, how can we use React to build more complex dApps? This way we can go from just building simple sites to actually building more complex sites depending on the use case, depending on the project. In week six, we're going to continue our React JS look with a web app project. So we'll start off with an introduction to React and then build out a larger project with React in week six. Next, we'll dive into week seven, where we get into building complex dApps. So now we're using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React as well. So we're going to learn in week seven how to build a simple dApp with React, Web3, and MetaMask. So these are popular tools for dApp development as well as a second project as well. So two projects with different use cases in week seven. Then we jump into week eight. We'll build a NFT minting dApp together with React. So we will build out first the front end of the site. So what the website should look like. And then we will connect to a, an NFT smart contract. So then we'll have a website that can connect to an NFT smart contract on the blockchain. In week nine, we will build out a to-do list dApp with Truffle and React. So we will again build out what the website should look like, and then we will connect it to a blockchain smart contract. Then we have week 10, where we are going to discuss Metaplex Candy. This was a topic that we added based on popular demand. There was popular demand for this topic, so we will cover it in week 10. We're going to learn NFT deployment and NFT dApp development, specifically this time for the Solana blockchain. Solana is another blockchain, not as popular as Ethereum, but quite popular because of specifically its NFT deployment. So we are going to cover NFT deployment to the Solana blockchain with a popular tool called Metaplex Candy. So this week 10 was added due to popular demand by students like you. So that is an overview of our 10 week curriculum. So this course is supersized at Web3, React.js, and then Web3 and React.js. This is a projects based course. We will be building tons of projects as you just saw. For example, a dApp 
with Truffle, Ganache, MetaMask, and JavaScript, as well as an NFT minting dApp. Those are just two of the many projects that we will build. We have three different plans for this course, self-directed live classes and project help or tutoring. So here are the three plan options for you. You can choose any of these three plans. The first plan is the self-directed plan where you get lifetime access to our entire video library and lifetime access to our entire library of code. This is for all semesters, so not just the first semester, but also for all future semesters as well. You also get access to the student community and to instructor support and to weekly discussion hour. So this is the self-directed plan you're learning on your own following along. We have a three and five month, month payment plan for this plan and every plan as well. If you need an invoice for employer reimbursement for professional development, we can provide an invoice as well. Our next plan is the live class option. You get everything from the self-directed plan. You also get 10 weeks of live classes. And we meet for two hours per week every Wednesday over Zoom. You also get six hours of dedicated live Q&A, access to all future videos and code. So again, you get access not just to your semester, but to every semester as well. Oops, you also get help with two personal projects. And you get to know your classmates who are with you live. We also help with resume and interview prep if you're interested in getting a job as a DAP developer. And unlimited email and chat Q&A. So that is the second option for you all. Our third option is the project help or tutoring plan. You get everything from the previous two plans. As well, you get help with building a custom project, including software development if needed by our team. You also get 10 hours of one-on-one -on -one video or phone sessions or software development time with our experts. So if you do want private tutoring, extra help, then this is the plan for you. If you have a project in mind that you need help with specifically building that project, this is also the plan for you. We have a question from Leiru. Can we access live classes recording from the self-directed plan? Yes, you will get the recordings in the self-directed plan of the live classes. You just won't get the live chance. So on our live classes, we have a lot of Q&A discussion in addition to the actual course. So if you want to ask questions live, then the live classes plan is for you. So those are our three payment options. And feel free to book a call with us or email us if you do have any questions about the plans at any time. Next up, let's talk about the dates. So this class is going to begin on June 8th. The course length is 10 weeks with a two week break in between. So I encourage you all to sign up because we do keep class sizes small. So make sure to sign up before we fill up. The effort is about eight to 12 hours per week self-paced learning. It does depend on your goals for the course. If you want to just watch the course and that's it, and that's completely fine. Don't have to do any of the homework. The homework is optional. But if you do want to perhaps start your own DAP company or get hired as a DAP developer, then you will require more effort per week to learn each topic and try out the homework, try out the projects. So it depends on what your goals are, as well as how much experience do you have? If you have no coding experience, then you'll require more effort to follow along than someone that does have coding experience. We meet every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Pacific. And each live class is two hours per week. Currently, we have an early bird special. If you use the coupon code, which I will paste in our chat, then you can save 20%. So this will end in six days, but because you are all early birds, you can take advantage right now. Also, if you do purchase more than one class at once, if you purchase, for example, Web3 and blockchain, then you can save 10%. So that is automatic at any time. If you purchase two courses, you can save 10%. 
The blockchain programming course is the partner course to Web3. As I mentioned earlier tonight, when one of you asked, the Web3 side is that DAP side, building out the DAPs, the website, that gateway to the blockchain. Blockchain programming is specifically for building out the smart contracts that live on the blockchain, so the blockchain side. So it depends on which side you are interested in, the smart contract backend side or the Web3 frontend side. As a DAP developer, you should know both because it's going to be a lot easier to communicate with smart contracts if you actually understand them. So that's why it's highly recommended to learn both sides, but you can just pick one side as well. To actually sign up, you go to our project course plans and you choose one of these options such as live classes and or self-directed and you add it to your cart and then this will take you to the checkout page. All right, so here you go. Let's see, oh, maybe it's not working on my website right now, but we'll get that, we'll look into this, might be my browser. So you add it to your cart and then, so mine's already added and then you go to your cart and you can make your purchase. Again, you can save 20% if you add in a coupon code or get 10% immediately if you buy two or more courses at once. So you can do your cart at any time at the top right-hand corner. So that is an overview of our course and a taste of the topics that we will cover. So tonight we did an overview of the Web3 landscape. And then in the course, we focus on actually building projects. So you'll walk away with a huge portfolio. Hopefully now after this webinar, you understand Web3 better and dApps better as well. Of course, we only had an hour. So if anyone has any questions in addition of anything they want me to clarify or any questions about blockchain or Web3, which course they should pick from our two blockchain courses, feel free to ask away. I'm happy to stick around and answer any questions. So here's an example. If you purchase two, you automatically get a 10% discount. All right, thank you everyone for joining me. I will stick around in case any of you do have questions, feel free to speak them over the microphone or type them out in chat. I can paste the links another time for everyone. So I'll start with our slides for tonight. If anyone wants a reference to our slides, you can access them on Google Docs. I encourage you to follow us on YouTube where you can rewatch this webinar and watch other webinars and sample tutorials. I encourage you to join our Discord where you can chat with instructors and students, even if you're not in a course yet. And I will drop a link to the actual Web3 course itself. Thank you, Naum. I hope to see you in June. I will also drop our coupon code. I'm going to go back to the Web3 course and paste in the coupon code that everyone should save. You can use that coupon code until May 8th. I will also drop a link to our partner course, the blockchain programming course, where this is the partner course to the Web3 course, where you learn all about the smart contract side. So all about the blockchain side that we'll be connecting to. In the Web3 course, we're learning all about how to connect to this blockchain side. So I'll drop a link to that in the chat as well. All right, does anyone have any questions about the Web3 course, the blockchain programming course, or any related topics that you'd like me to clarify? I'm happy to do so. Otherwise, we have covered all of our topics for tonight, and I'm excited to see you all potentially in June for either Web3 or blockchain programming, where I can take you through all these topics more in depth and actually build out the projects that we discussed. 
There's a lot of exciting projects. You can build exciting dApps. This is the great time to be in the dApp space because there are few dApps out there, especially when compared to other pieces of software like a regular website. There are fewer dApps, fewer dApp developers. So it's a great time to get into the space. If anyone has any questions throughout the week, feel free to email us here at LumiWealth or ask us on Discord. We check Discord quite often. You can also book a call with us. We're happy to answer questions at any time. If no one has any questions for now, that's completely fine. I hope to see you in June in our Web3 course. That does it for the night. Everyone have a great night and I will see you next time.